Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through an introduction to compound inequalities on a number line. We will take a look at graphing compound inequalities on a number line and then writing compound inequalities from a number line. We will go through four examples for each section. And this will give us a nice understanding of compound inequalities on number lines. Let's start with graphing compound inequalities on a number line. Now for numbers one and two, we will break everything down along the way in order to better understand everything. We will start with an or compound inequality, then move on to an and compound inequality, and then lastly, we will end with numbers three and four. Let's jump into number one, where we have x is less than or equal to zero, or x is greater than four. So here, x has to be less than or equal to zero, or x has to be greater than four. So a solution of a compound inequality involving or is anything that makes either inequality true. So basically, this must be true, or that must be true. Now let's graph this compound inequality on a number line to give us a nice visual representation. And we're actually going to break this down into two graphs first in order to better understand what we're working with here. Then we will combine everything into one. Let's start with x is less than or equal to zero and just focus on that. Now zero is included, so we need a filled circle at zero, and then an arrow going left, representing everything less than zero. So zero is a solution and anything less than zero. Next, we have x is greater than four. So we need an open circle at four. Four is not included. And then we need an arrow going right, representing everything greater than four. And that's x is greater than four. Anything greater than four is a solution. Now, since this is a compound inequality, we need to combine these. We're going to graph them on the same number line. So we have x is less than or equal to zero. So we need that filled circle at zero with the arrow going left. And then we have x is greater than four. So we need that open circle with the arrow going right. So this is our graph of the compound inequality. This represents x is less than or equal to zero or x is greater than four. So as far as solutions, some numbers that will work for x and make this compound inequality true, let's try a couple of numbers out. For example, will two work for x? Is two a solution? Well, is two less than or equal to zero or greater than four? No, so two is not a solution. How about seven? Is seven less than or equal to zero or greater than four? Yes, seven is greater than four, so seven is a solution. Anything less than or equal to zero will work, or anything greater than four will work. And we can see that represented on the number line. Let's move on to number two, where we will have an and compound inequality. Let's jump into number two, where we have x is greater than negative two, and x is less than or equal to seven. So we have two inequalities combined by and. So here, x has to be greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven. So a solution of a compound inequality involving and must make both inequalities true, must satisfy both. Now, something I want to mention about compound inequalities involving and, they can be written without the word and in the middle. All we need to do here is start with our variable, x. And our variable is going to go in the middle. Now, x is greater than negative two. And x is less than or equal to seven. 
And that's our compound inequality written without the word and. And we can read this starting with the variable. So x is greater than negative 2 and less than or equal to 7. So whenever you see a compound inequality written like this, it's a compound inequality involving and. So this is something to keep in mind while working with compound inequalities. Now let's grab this on a number line, and this is going to give us a nice visual representation of the compound inequality. And we're going to break this down into two graphs first in order to better understand what we're working with here. And then we will combine everything into one. First, we have x is greater than negative two. So let's just focus on that and graph that. Negative two is not included. So we start with an open circle at negative two. And then we need an arrow going right, representing everything greater than negative two. And that's x is greater than negative two. Anything greater than negative two is a solution. Next, we have x is less than or equal to seven. Now seven is included, so we need a filled circle at seven and then an arrow going left representing everything less than seven. And that's x is less than or equal to seven. Seven is a solution and anything less than seven. Now, since this is a compound inequality, we need to combine these. We need to see where they overlap. So think of it like this. We want this section right here. So we need an open circle at negative two, a filled circle at seven, and then we want everything in between. So this is our graph of x is greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven. That represents our compound inequality. So as far as solutions, some numbers that will work for x and make this compound inequality true, let's try a couple of numbers out. For example, will three work for x? Is three a solution? Well, is three greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven? Yes, so three is a solution. How about 10? Is 10 greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven? Well, 10 is greater than negative two, but 10 is not less than or equal to seven. So 10 is not a solution. So anything greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven will work. And we can see that represented on the number line. Let's move on to numbers three and four. Here are numbers three and four. And for these, we're going to graph everything right from the compound inequality. We're not going to break it down into two separate graphs like we did for numbers one and two. And feel free to pause the video and try these on your own if you would like. Let's jump into number three where we have y is less than negative three, or y is greater than one. Let's start with y is less than negative three. We need an open circle at negative three. Negative three is not included. And then we need an arrow going left, representing everything less than negative three. Now we need y is greater than one. So we need an open circle at one, one is not included, and then an arrow going right, representing everything greater than one. And that's it, that's our graph on a number line of y is less than negative three, or y is greater than one. Let's move on to number four, where we have d is greater than or equal to 24, and less than or equal to 30. So this is an and compound inequality. Remember, when we have a compound inequality involving and, it can be written without and. Let's start with d is greater than or equal to 24. 
Now 24 is included, so we need a filled circle at 24. And D is less than or equal to 30. So let's put a filled circle at 30 as well. 30 is included. So we need everything greater than or equal to 24 and less than or equal to 30. So we want everything in between here. And that's it. That's our graph on a number line of D is greater than or equal to 24 and less than or equal to 30. So there's our section on graphing compound inequalities on a number line. Let's move on to writing compound inequalities from a number line. Here's our section on writing compound inequalities from a number line. Let's jump into number one. Now the first thing that we need to determine when writing a compound inequality from a number line is if it's an or, or and compound inequality. Well, we can see that we have two separate inequalities graphed here with that gap in the middle. And the arrows are going in opposite directions. So this is going to be an or compound inequality. We can clearly see we have two inequalities here. We have this inequality or this inequality. Now taking a look at the inequality on the left, we have an open circle at negative two. So negative two is not included. Then the arrow is going left. So that's representing everything less than negative two. Let's use x for our variable. So we have x is less than negative two. Now the inequality on the right, we have a closed circle at one. So one is included. Then we have an arrow going right, representing everything greater than one. So we have x is greater than or equal to one. And those are our two inequalities that make up our compound inequality. So let's write this out using or. We have x is less than negative two or x is greater than or equal to one. And that's it, we're done. That's our compound inequality from the number line below. Let's move on to number two. Now let's take a look at number two and start by seeing if this is an or, or and compound inequality. Well, we have what looks like a line segment or just a section of a number line here. We don't have any arrows or inequalities that necessarily pop out, so to speak. This is what and compound inequalities look like on a number line. Now we can see that we have a filled circle at two. Two is included. Then we have the numbers to the right, so greater than two. So we have two included here, and then we want the numbers to the right. So our inequality here, and we will use x for our variable, is x is greater than or equal to two. Next, we have an open circle at nine. So nine is not included. Then we have the numbers to the left. So less than nine. So an open circle at nine, and then the numbers to the left. So our inequality here is x is less than nine. And these are our two inequalities that make up our compound inequality. And since this is an and compound inequality, we want where these two inequalities overlap. X has to be greater than or equal to two and less than nine. So let's write this out. X is greater than or equal to two and X is less than nine. Now remember, we can write and compound inequalities without the word and. So we can write this as x, I like to write the variable down first, and it goes in the middle, is greater than or equal to two and less than 
9. So again, x is greater than or equal to 2 and less than 9. And that's our compound inequality written out from the number line. Let's move on to numbers 3 and 4. Here are numbers 3 and 4. Feel free to pause the video and try these two on your own if you'd like. Let's jump into number 3, and it looks like we have an or compound inequality. We have a filled circle at 20. 20 is included. Then the arrow is going left, representing everything less than 20. So we have x is less than or equal to 20. Then we have a filled circle at 25, with an arrow going right, representing everything greater than 25. So we have x is greater than or equal to 25. Now we have our two inequalities that make up our compound inequality. We have x is less than or equal to 20, or x is greater than or equal to 25. Let's move on to number four, and it looks like we have an and compound inequality here. We have an open circle at negative three, a filled circle at positive three, and then we want everything in between. So where our two inequalities overlap. Let's figure out our two inequalities. We'll start with negative three. We have an open circle there. So negative three is not included. Then we have the numbers to the right. So greater than negative three. So an open circle at negative three, and then we want the numbers greater than negative three. So our inequality here, x is greater than negative three. Next, we have a filled circle at positive three. Three is included. Then we have the numbers to the left. So less than three. So three is included here. And then we want the numbers less than three. So our inequality, x is less than or equal to three. And those are our two inequalities that make up our compound inequality. And since this is an and compound inequality, we want where these two inequalities overlap. x has to be greater than negative three and less than or equal to three, positive three. So let's write this out using and, and then without and. So we have x is greater than negative three, and x is less than or equal to three, positive three. Now let's write this without and. So we have x is greater than negative three, and less than or equal to three. So x is greater than negative three and less than or equal to three. So there you have it. There's an introduction to compound inequalities on a number line. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.